Dear Journalism, I first met you almost exactly 30 years ago. I was a junior at Heriton High School in Rosemont, Pennsylvania, on the suburbs of Philadelphia, and I joined this stu uh, the student newspaper, the Free Forum. And one of the very first stories that I did was one that I came up with myself. When I was in gym class, I had $15 stolen out of my wallet. But it was a really curious theft. Because they stole the you tens come in, right? and the fives, you go come in. but not any of the ones. And so I wondered, had other people also had money stolen in this way? And I started asking around about friends. And it turned out that a lot of them had had the same exact pattern of theft, where the big bills were taken and the ones were left. And so then I did a school-wide survey, more than 350 people surveyed, and more than half of the students in the school had had money stolen while they were in gym class. A quarter of the freshman class, and they'd only been on campus for two months. So then I got into journalistic investigative mode. I started interviewing the principal, the gym teacher, the head of campus security, and I wrote my first big breaking news story, and it got published on the front page of the paper in December of 1993, 30 years ago. And I remember seeing everybody in home reading the newspaper, and just that feeling of intoxication, knowing that I had found my professional love. And it was absolute love at first sight. I loved the feeling of knowing that I was changing lives and making an impact and pursuing my curiosity to its end. And so I went out and started to do follow-up reporting. And one of the people I had spoken to was the head of campus security. And he had told me that his theory of what was happening was that someone was taking the tab of the cans of soda and using it to prop open the door and then they were getting in during gym class while things were locked. Well, I wanted to go back to the head of campus security to see what had happened since then and I learned that he was no longer with the school. He had been let go. It turned out that it was he who had been stealing the money all along. Well, this love affair with journalism, I was such a perfect fit. I was insatiably curious. I was fantastic on deadline. And anybody who knows me, I had no boundaries whatsoever. I was willing to talk to anyone. And it was an incredible fit because it was a two-sided puzzle. On one side, the puzzle is figuring out the pieces of the story, reporting it out and understanding what are the puzzle pieces, what are their shape. And then the second part of the puzzle was then fitting them together into coherent narrative, into a coherent story. I loved doing the work. I was a journalist all through college, and then my first job out of school was as an intern at the Washington Post. And I got to meet Ben Bradley and Kay Graham and Bob Woodward, luminaries of journalism. And for that, I am so grateful. So after the internship at the Washington Post, I become an intern at the Miami Herald. I get into my old Dodge Neon, and I drive down to Miami Beach and take my talents to Miami Beach. And I was an intern in February of 2000, a few months after a little Cuban boy had washed ashore named Elian Gonzalez. And I was part of the team that covered his getting whisked back to Cuba to be reunited with his father, work that was awarded with a Pulitzer Prize. And my mentor at the time was Marty Merzer, one of the top journalists at the Miami Herald. And he was assigned to write a book about the contested Bush v. Gore election. And he tapped me to be his research assistant. I ended up getting credited in that book. All of that in my first year as a professional journalist. Well, fast forward 20 years. I've had this incredible career. I'm now the news director of WLRN the local NPR affiliate, and then suddenly and completely unexpectedly, journalism, you broke up with me. I was fired. And I wasn't just fired, I was fired publicly. It was published in the industry press, it was published in the local newspapers, and it was the most difficult moment of my professional life. When journalism broke up with me, you almost broke me. And I had a, my daughter who's here was nine months old. My wife was on maternity leave still. We didn't have a salary. I lost my friends, I lost my professional identity. 
And I'm so thankful to my parents, to my wife, to my baby daughter for helping me through what was the most difficult period of my life. But it didn't break me, it broke me open. It broke me open. And it broke me open to discovering new and different things that I never would have explored if I had stayed a journalist. And so I went into public relations and then into marketing and then I taught on this very stage as an adjunct professor at Miami Dade College. And then eventually I discovered entrepreneurship. And so today I am the proud owner of a small business. It's called BizHack Academy. We train other small businesses in how to market themselves and to grow faster through digital marketing and AI tools. And I have never been more professionally fulfilled than I am today. There was something about journalism that I never really loved. And it was that it was a hired gun. They told me, journalism, you told me what to cover. And I didn't always enjoy the topics, the beats. I, sometimes I, I felt like I had to cover it because it was my job. I loved the act of being a journalist. I loved that two-sided puzzle, but I didn't always love what I covered. And I never really found a topic or a beat that was really a fit until I discovered entrepreneurship, until I discovered the topic of how to build a business. And I like to think myself today as a journalist on the how to build a business you love beat. So that's a picture of me as a hotshot foreign correspondent. I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina for the Miami Herald at the time. And I'm looking at me today, grayer, older, a little heavier. And I would think that my old self would be proud of where I've landed. Thank you. <laughs>